Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. All the source code for each video tutorial is located on my website at javacjava.com. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. This tutorial is on the while loop statement. I'm going to go and open up my website here to javacjava.com, click on the begin button, and scroll down to my tutorials all the way to the while loop statement. The while statement is a looping statement that repeats a block of code as long as an expression evaluates to true. The while statement has a great deal of flexibility because you get to determine the conditions that stop the loop. Stopping the loop simply means that the expression portion will evaluate to false. The while loop is quite simple in its structure. So you got the while keyword here, and then you've got the expression that's going to be evaluated. Along with, as long as this evaluates to true, it'll continue to um, execute everything inside of the while code block here, right? So basically your statements are executed, then you perform your logic to change the value of the expression or you perform some logic to call the break statement. So um, let's go ahead and just get started right on this here. We'll come down here and highlight all this code here. Hit control C or right click, select copy. We'll move the browser off screen. We'll go over here to start, search, type in CMD, which is the, which will open up the command prompt. If you're running, running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go ahead and type in uh, start run and then CMD. Let's go ahead and open that up here. First thing you want to do is type in Java C and press enter. Now, um, if you don't see all this stuff scroll by and you get some sort of error message, you're gonna to wanna to watch my tutorial on installing the Java Development Kit, the JDK. Make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing with the tutorials. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go down to the root. Then we're gonna make a directory called Java, MD is that. Um, I already have it, but if you didn't, it would go ahead and create it for you. We're going to change directory to the Java folder, and we're going to make a directory today called uh, uh, while loop. We're going to change to the while loop directory, and we're going to notepad while loop.java. While loop.java is going to be our source code file name, otherwise known as our compilation unit. We'll go ahead and hit enter on that, and then we'll hit control V to paste all this stuff in, or right click and select paste. Let's go ahead and save this here. I'll go over a few things this does. So basically, we're gonna have like three sections. First section here, um, we're gonna use the while like a for statement, right? So basically, while x is less than 10, that's our expression here, we're gonna print out uh, to the console here um, the value of x, and then we're just gonna simply add x to one. So just like a for statement here, where once x is equal to 10 at that point, it'll go ahead and that'll uh, evaluate to false here on this expression. It'll fall out of there and print a new line, okay? The next thing we're gonna do, in this next little section here, we're going to use break to terminate a while loop, okay? So if we say while true, this basically just creates an infinite loop that'll run forever. And the first statement uh, that we're in there is an if statement. So if x is equal to 5, then we're going to go ahead and execute everything in the code block for the if statement, which is just break. And that break will terminate the while loop. And then basically everything after the while loop will continue top-down execution. Okay, so we're going to print um, to the console the value of x. And of course, we set x equal to 0 prior to starting all this. So this will go ahead and keep adding x to 1. So finally, when x is equal to five, it'll go ahead and break out. So it won't actually get to the point where it prints five, but it will print zero through four. Okay, and then we'll do a print line, also with the um, escape uh, sequence for a new line, right? So this is two, two line feeds in one, right? Our print line will print a line feed after it prints basically a, a escape character line feed, escape sequence. I just brought this up because we're going to need to go over this in this next little section here. Just a little review of this escape sequence new line. So now in the final section, we're just going to basically uh, print out to the console 
would you like to terminate this program, right? We're expecting a Y or an N value. In this particular case, I made it so it's not really case sensitive, doesn't matter if they put an uppercase Y or an uppercase, or lowercase Y or an upper N or lower N. So I'm trapping for both of that. So the first thing we're gonna do in here is we're going to use the system.in.read method, right? And we are, we're going to be casting the result to a char data type and storing that to this char input char variable. So we'll test to see. And remember, this is a blocking, a blocking method here, which is basically like that. That read just keeps the cursor up there until something is entered and then press enter, right? Enter causes it to go ahead and feed everything that it's got. Um, actually, it reads it character by character to be technical. So it takes the first character and it, we go ahead and store that to input char. So if input char is equal to y or input char is equal to lowercase y, upper or lower, we're gonna print out, uh, ooh, glad that's over with, and then we're gonna go ahead and break. Break will terminate the while statement and we are done with the program at that point. So, um, otherwise, uh, else if it'll go ahead and check and see if it's equal to upper n or lower n and then we'll just print out really, okay, how about now, right? Ask for the same y n. Now, if they don't put in Y or N, we'll go ahead and print uh, print to the console. What would you like to terminate this program? Yeah. So basically, we didn't didn't understand you know what they were putting in something other than Y or N. So now here's something I'm going to talk about here. The the system dot in dot read. You can start typing in like Y and then press Enter or N and press Enter. And what it's going to do when you type a letter into the console, the read method buffers all the keystrokes you type. If you type in N, then press enter, read buffers the single character N and then a new line character, the new line escape sequence. So um, we have to empty that buffer out before we can go ahead and continue on with our main, our main loop here, you know, asking questions. So we're gonna do a nested while right here. So this is an infinite loop while true. And basically what we're gonna do is we are going to keep calling the system.in.read method, which continues to unload its buffer, right? So if we just typed in n and then uh, enter, the only character we're gonna get out of it at this point in time for the ignore is it's going to actually be equal to the new line character. And then we'll go ahead and break because at that point we know we have our buffer empty. But let's say for example, at the, um, the system.in.read you had typed in something like um, y e s and then enter right it would go through here and the first one would be equal y right and it would go ahead and terminate out of there or actually let's back up let's say you type in n o and then press enter so it would come down here uh, up here and it would say okay n it would display this particular line now we'd still have an o and we'd still have a new line read in there so while we're looping through here and we call this it would then return back O for the ignore, right? And that's not equal to our new line. We know the new line will be the end of it. So then we'll loop back again and call it again, and then it'll finally say, okay, I'm gonna feed in my new line now because I'm in, at the end of my buffer. And then we'll go ahead and break out of there, and that'll return execution back to the main while loop here, right? And here's the end of the code block there. So basically what we're doing is we're just emptying a buffer right here. You don't really truly have to understand this portion of it there, but I thought I'd give you a Give you a heads up on what I'm doing on that. So uh, let's go ahead and make sure we got this save. Let's go ahead and clear our screen. Type in Java C for the Java compiler. And then while loop.java, let's go ahead and compile that. And let's run it. Strip off this. Okay, so first line, we got use while like a for statement, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is exactly what happened up here, right? While x is less than 10, and we kept adding to that. So very similar to the for statement. And then we're gonna use break to terminate a while loop, right? So we did that down here. We just kept looping up on an infinite loop there. And now here we're kind of at this, this main, uh, the beef of this particular program per se. So would you like to terminate this program? Uh, we'll just, uh, oops, I just pressed enter on that. Uh, let's go ahead and press N, right? This is really, okay, how about now? And what if I type in the number five? What, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Would you like to terminate this program now? No, 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 no. Uh, okay, 
okay, finally, yeah, we'll go ahead and terminate it. Ooh, glad that's over with. So, um, that is, is basically how the while loop works there. It's, uh, leave you with some final thoughts. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and close out of that. And basically the versatility of the while loop is super cool. Now, because it is so simple, the sky's the limit on how you choose to utilize its looping feature. So anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.